Uh, hello there and uh, welcome back to my new video. In this video I'm going to show you how to use uh, columns and rows with uh, Jetpack Compose. And uh, in the previous video we have uh, written our first composable function and uh, now it is time to get uh, introduced with uh, some uh, layout composables which uh, will allow us to place uh, its uh, children in a vertical or a horizontal orientation. Now in the traditional view system uh, we have a different kind of uh, layouts like uh, linear layout, constraint layout, Layout, frame layout and so on, while uh, with Jetpack Compose it's a little different. So the main uh, layout composables that we have are uh, column and row. And uh, those two composables are uh, very similar to the linear layout which we have in our view system. So uh, column composable function will add uh, all its children composables in a vertical orientation, while a row will add uh, all its children composables in a horizontal orientation. Ok, so uh, enough theory, let's see some uh, practical examples. So here I have uh, created the one uh, simple project using a composable activity and this is how our main activity uh, looks by default. So we only have uh, one uh, composable function which uh, we're going to remove now because we're not going to need that at this point. Ok, so let's just remove that from here and here. Alright. So uh, inside our default preview function here we're going to uh, write some code and then we're going to preview that uh, UI right here on the right side. Ok. So uh, first here I'm going to add uh, one uh, layout uh, composable function called the uh, column. Okay, so in this documentation it says that uh, it's basically a layout composable that uh, places its uh, children in a vertical sequence and uh, also there is another layout composable that uh, can place uh, all its children in a horizontal sequence which is called the row. Okay, for now we're going to experiment with a column. So let's add this uh, composable function. Alright, and inside this uh, column I'm going to add uh, one more uh, predefined uh, composable function which comes with uh, Jetpack Compose library and that uh, function is called the uh, surface and uh, inside this uh, surface uh, composable function we can also add uh, some other uh, composable functions as well and this uh, surface uh, accepts uh, multiple parameters and uh, click uh, shortcut uh, control P so here we can see that we can add a modifier, shape, color, content color, border stroke, elevation. So uh, here for now I'm going to specify a modifier so a modifier is uh, one of the most important uh, objects uh, or uh, properties which we can use uh, on our composables and uh, with the modifier we can basically modify uh, many composable properties. So here let's uh, call a modifier and uh, we can also set the width and height of our uh, composable and now I'm going to specify here the first uh, width. So let's uh, choose the width and here I'm going to specify let's say maybe uh, 200 dp so dot dp alright. Uh, next here I'm going to also specify a height. So let's just uh, call here a height and for the height we can set uh, let's say maybe 50 dp. Alright. So now our surface will have the width of uh, 200 dp and height of uh, 50 dp. And uh, after uh, that uh, modifier we want to add uh, one more uh, parameter here and that is a color. And for the color of our surface I'm going to select uh, color primary. So uh, we can use a material uh, theme object. And from here we can call our colors. Then here we can select a primary color. And it's always a good uh, practice to uh, choose uh, colors from this material theme. Because uh, that way you can uh, adapt uh, your application with uh, dark and light mode uh, very easily. And you're going to see uh, some more uh, tutorials about uh, theming in uh, Jetpack Compose. For now let's just uh, leave that uh, as it is. Alright. So now inside our surface we are not going to add uh, any element. We are going to just uh, use this uh, surface. So let's just uh, build and refresh our preview so we can see how this uh, surface will actually look like in this preview screen on the right side. Ok, so there it is. So this is how it uh, looks like. So it's basically a rectangle with a width of uh, 200 dp and height of uh, 50 dp. And uh, now to see this uh, surface even better, on our column I'm going to add uh, one uh, parameter and that is a modifier as well. So let's call a modifier and here I'm going to call a fill max size. So basically this fill max size function from our modifier will expand our column to the full width and height of our parent. And in this case uh, the parent of this column is uh, our compose a test uh, theme which is basically our whole screen. Ok, so now let's build and refresh and see uh, what happens. Ok, so now as you can see uh, this uh, column have uh, filled the full height and width of our parent which is the whole 
whole screen, okay? And uh, our surface is uh, only a small part of the screen, okay? And before we continue exploring uh, our uh, layout composable column, let me just add uh, or copy and paste this uh, surface a few more times down below. For example, three or four times, okay? So let's just uh, build and refresh to see how our screen now will uh, look like. And uh, after that, we're going to create a new composable function where we're going to store this surface. For now, let's just uh, leave that uh, as it is. And here, as you can see, on our screen, now we have uh, multiple surfaces. So we have uh, four different uh, surfaces right here. And uh, each one of those uh, has uh, the same width and height, okay? So, so basically, all those uh, surfaces uh, are uh, placed below one uh, another. And the reason why is because we are using a column, which will basically set uh, all our uh, composable functions in a vertical orientation. Okay, so now let's explore our column uh, furthermore. So now let's uh, hit here uh, Control P to uh, use this uh, shortcut so we can check out uh, all the parameters of our column. So the first parameter of this column is a modifier. Then we have here a vertical arrangement. Then we have a horizontal alignment. Okay, and uh, when we are using row, we're going to see here a vertical alignment alignment and horizontal arrangement. So it's a little bit different between a column and a row. And now let me just uh, use here a horizontal alignment. So let's add here a comma, then a horizontal alignment. And here I can call alignment uh, center horizontally, for example. So now let's uh, build and preview our uh, application here to see how now our screen uh, will look like. So now, as you can see, all our elements inside the column are uh, centered uh, horizontally, okay? And of course, we can center those uh, elements inside the column to a uh, start or to an end. And the start is a default uh, value for our column. So let's put those uh, elements on the end. And let's uh, build and refresh here. Okay, so now you can see that uh, all elements inside our column are uh, placed uh, at the end. And that's how this uh, horizontal alignment uh, is actually working. So after that, let's check uh, vertical array. Uh, arrangement. Okay, so let's call arrangement. And here we have a few options to choose. So we have a top, space between, bottom, center, space around, and space evenly. So first, uh, we're going to check uh, this uh, center, because the default value here is a top. And as you can see, all our elements uh, inside the column are at the top of the column. So let's choose here the center. And let's uh, build and refresh this uh, preview. Okay, so now you will see that uh, those elements uh, will be placed on the center of our screen but uh, vertically, okay. And of course, we can set uh, all those elements on the center of our screen by modifying a horizontal alignment. So a uh, center horizontally, okay, let's build and refresh now. And uh, there it is. And now, as you can see, we have placed uh, all those elements uh, on the center. So on the center vertically and horizontally, okay. Now uh, let's explore a different kind of a vertical arrangement. So uh, here we have a multiple option and you already saw how this uh, center vertical arrangement is working. And you can also guess uh, how this the top and the bottom vertical arrangement uh, will work. But now let's try uh, those three. So space evenly, space around and space between. So first, let's choose a space between. Okay, and let's uh, build and refresh. So uh, as you can see, this uh, space between uh, will place uh, children such that they are spaced evenly across the main axis without the free space before the first child or after the last child. So here we can see that uh, between each and every element uh, or composable function inside our column, we have a blank space. And uh, if we reduce the height uh, of our uh, column, then the space between those elements will uh, shrink as well. So let's check a different kind of uh, arrangement here. So we have also space evenly. And uh, this will place our children such that they are uh, spaced evenly across the main axis, including the free space before the first child and after the last child. So let's uh, build and refresh to see how this option will uh, work with those uh, elements. So uh, now you can see that here uh, we have also added a blank space before the first element and after the last element as well. And here we also have uh, an even or the same uh, blank space or the size between uh, each one of those elements and uh, before the first and after the last as well. And finally here we have one more. So we have a space around and let's uh, build and refresh to see how will this uh, actually work with our uh, composables inside the column. Okay, so now uh, basically this will add the space uh, before the first composable and after the last composable 
but as you can see here the space between uh, each one of those elements is the same but the space uh, before the first and after the last element is not the same as the one between those elements okay so that's the main difference between uh, those uh, vertical arrangements and uh, I hope that you have understand uh, how this uh, arrangement and alignment uh, is actually working with the column so it's uh, basically very easy okay so now I'm going to show you how to use the width uh, attribute with uh, composable functions inside a column so first I'm going to remove uh, those uh, two surfaces and I'm going to leave only those two okay and I can also remove this uh, vertical arrangement I don't need that at this point okay so let's just build and refresh this okay so there we go so now we have only two surfaces and they basically look uh, almost like uh, merged uh, elements but now let me add here on our modifier one more uh, element or a function called the weight and here we can specify a float value and let's say I want to specify here a number of uh, 3f and uh, down below I want to specify a uh, weight of uh, maybe 1f okay and we can also remove here the height okay and let's uh, build and refresh that okay so now you can see that uh, we have uh, filled the full height of our parent which is the column and now let me just change here the color here to maybe secondary okay so now we can uh, see a uh, different colors so here the first uh, surface has this uh, green color and this uh, second surface has this uh, color primary so the first surface has a weight of uh, 3f while the second one have a weight of only one so uh, when we specify here those uh, values three and one so three plus one is four and now we can basically split this uh, parent which is the column in uh, four different sections okay and now if our screen contains uh, four sections in total then uh, this uh, first element will take the three sections of uh, this parent while this uh, second surface will take uh, only one section of the whole parent okay and that's basically how this uh, weight uh, element is uh, working you can of course set here the same number as down so we can set here 3 and 3 and now they will basically uh, be even okay and now we can change this to maybe 2 or maybe 1 and as you can see now that's how you can basically change their uh, size with this uh, weight uh, function okay so it's pretty much convenient and uh, now let's just uh, copy this uh, surface and let's create a new function new composable function so we don't have to repeat this uh, surface two more times so let's create here a new composable function so let's name this uh, function uh, custom item okay and let's paste this uh, surface inside so as you can see uh, when we place this uh, surface inside a new function without the column then uh, we will not be able to use this uh, weight uh, function okay and to fix that we need to call this uh, column scope or basically create an extension function on that uh, column scope so let's here uh, call a uh, column scope dot uh, custom item so that's an extension function on our column scope and now you will see that we can use this uh, weight okay and now of course uh, instead of uh, hard coding this value we can add that value right here so weight of a type uh, float and here we can also add a color of a type uh, color and now we can here add that uh, weight and down below we can add here a color from the parameters of this function and now let's remove those two and uh, here uh, we can also call this uh, custom item function so custom item let's specify here the weight maybe uh, 3f and the color can be maybe a uh, material uh, theme dot uh, colors dot uh, secondary and I can also here specify a default value for the color so we don't need to specify always uh, that uh, color so let's here add a default value of uh, material theme dot uh, colors dot uh, primary so that's going to be a default color for this surface all right and down below we can just call again a custom item with uh, one f and here we don't need to specify the second parameter because we have specified here a default value and if we don't specify here that a second parameter then this default color uh, will be used so now let's uh, build and refresh this preview to see uh, how will that look like okay so there we go as you can see everything uh, works uh, perfectly and we have created an extension function on our column scope because inside this uh, function we are not going to use a column as a parent of our surface and to actually use this uh, weight uh, function we're going to need to call uh, an extension function on a column scope so that's uh, an important for you to know all right so now you have seen uh, everything you need to know about uh, the column of course you can set uh, some different values for the width and height of this column so we can set uh, some uh, fixed value for example let's say maybe height can be uh, 500 uh, dp so it doesn't have to fill the whole parent okay and now i can call this uh, column uh, here as well so we can run our app and check it out 
and I'm going to also here add uh, one uh, more uh, function background and here I'm going to specify uh, color dot uh, light gray for the background of this uh, column okay let me just run the app so we can check that out on our Android emulator so now as you can see our column will take uh, only the height of uh, 500 dp and uh, its uh, width will be basically 200 dp because that's the width of those uh, two custom uh, composable functions inside our column and here we can also increase here uh, the width of this uh, column to maybe let's say uh, 500 dp as well so let's run our app again to see how will now that look like okay so now as you can see the width of our uh, column is a uh, 500 dp and uh, the background color of our column is a uh, light gray so you can see that right here okay and basically there are more options which we can modify through this uh, modifier so it's a uh, so it's a very useful object to customize with uh, basically each and every composable function out there and uh, now that you have seen how to use a column i'm going to show you how to use a row and for the row we're going to just uh, use this preview okay now i'm going to change the width of this uh, custom item to maybe uh let's say 50 dp and down below for our column we can add a fill max size so we can fill out our uh, whole screen again okay so we also need to rename this uh, column to row now because now we're going to use a row and the row is basically a layout composable in a horizontal orientation instead of a vertical orientation like the column and here as you can see we have uh, some error so a row does not accept the same uh, parameter as a column so instead of a horizontal alignment we have a horizontal arrangement and uh, instead of a vertical arrangement we have a vertical alignment so let's here replace this uh, horizontal alignment with a uh, horizontal arrangement okay and let's here uh, use uh, arrangement uh, start okay and uh, here as you can see we cannot call our uh, custom item function because this custom item composable function is an extension function on a column scope but now we are using row and row is using row scope so let's uh, rename this to row uh, scope okay and now we can use those items and let's uh, rebuild our uh, preview here okay so let's just replace this uh, column here as well with the row and let's uh, copy and paste this uh, horizontal uh, arrangement from down below okay so now it will uh, build uh, successfully uh, okay so here we also need to add the height of uh, 50 dp so we have forgot to do that all right and now as you can see our items inside our row so we have two custom items they are placed uh, in a horizontal orientation and the first one uh, has a weight of three while the second one has a weight of one so basically the row is the same as a column and the main difference is the orientation of our composable functions inside uh, those layout composables and of course with the row we can use a vertical alignment so let's just use a vertical alignment and here we can just uh, call uh, for example alignment uh, center vertically and we can center those uh, two uh, custom items uh, on the center here vertically okay okay so basically that's uh, pretty much it for uh, rows and columns so uh, i hope that uh, this uh, video tutorial was uh, fun and that you have learned a lot by watching me so uh, be sure to comment down below if you want to see uh, more videos about uh, jetpack compose like this video if you find it helpful of course and uh, see you the next one